G'day guys, Damo here, and welcome to another Round the Fire video. To all subscribers, welcome back, and if you're new to the channel, g'day. So, just been out camping for the last couple of days, um, out here at Kenilworth, beautiful spot. Got the, uh, got the rig set up, it's still a work in progress. But what I really wanted to show you guys today is I'm out here with Woody. The Australian Overlander. You can check him out on um, on YouTube. We've been camping out here. G'day. Buddy. How are you? Good, good. That's good. So we've been camping out here for the last couple of days on um, on private property up in Kenilworth. But what I really wanted to show you guys was actually Woody's trailer setup. This is brilliant. Perfect looking trailer. It's neat. It matches his... Um, matches his Jeep. So for all the Jeep guys, jump across to the Australian Overlander and uh, have a look at that. But all we're gonna do, cause I think this is fantastic. I'm, I'm thinking about getting one myself, to be honest. Um, show you through this. What I might do is, um, I might just have a little yarn with Woody, just check out, um, check out why he's done a few things on here. Cause it's, it's quite a tidy little setup. So, Woody, man, talk us through your trailer. Well, it was kind of born out of a bit of a sad story. Uh, a couple of years ago, we got caught in a, camping in a flash flood and we lost most of our setup and we had to start again. And we knew two things from that. We wanted most things, like our equipment and that, to be attached to the trailer or our Jeep. We didn't want to have a bunch of stuff sitting on the ground everywhere and we didn't want to be sleeping on the ground anymore either. Uh, so that's how the idea for the trailer was born. Our family was expanding too, so we needed to be able to carry more things. Um, we're a young family, so we're also on a budget. So we were looking at ways to do this the most cost-effective way. Started doing a bunch of research. You know, I work in the four-wheel drive industry, so I was at all the trade shows, you know. I'd have the long lunch break and I'd go and check everything out and get some ideas. And this is what we've come up with. But you know, basic formula, it's a sealed, you know, box trailer. And then we've outfitted it and upgraded it for a bit of off-roading um, to do what we need to do. So man, it, it, that's, it looks pretty good. So it looks like, uh, what is this? This is a six by four Yeah, trailer? approximately, yeah. Six by four. And... A bit deeper than standard. Okay, I was gonna say the sides look, um, the sides look a bit deeper, yeah. Mm. So that obviously will get around to the kitchen. But what do we got here? We've got, uh, what do you got here, mate? So here we got some charging sockets. So we're standing under the shade right now. So it's all safe to have our gear in here. So we've got some USB points. So, you know, we can charge our mobile devices. And then we've got a couple of cigarette sockets. Uh, most electronic devices don't run on cigarette sockets. So this is mostly for our, our camp lights and that sort of thing and they're just running off the auxiliary battery inside the trailer. Oh man, that actually, that's pretty handy. What are these switches down here you've got going on? Uh, so this is what I rigged up to control all of our electronics on the trailer. So one down the end there is for the water pump. So I've just put a, a plastic water tank inside the trailer and I've just plumbed it through uh, just around to my wash basin in my, in my kitchen setup. Uh, then I've got ground lights floodlights which is more for off-roading rather than at camp because yep. they're really intense um, and then kitchen lights so I've got some key LEDs and positions. And that's, that's these bad boys here what they light for us. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. How do you find those at night? They actually I know how I found them at night they looked really yeah. really good. Yeah they're, they're, they're bright for camp probably a bit too bright if I'm honest for while you're sitting at camp but it's great for setups in the dark or off-roading in the dark. It definitely had, uh, he definitely had a better light set up than, than me. Mine's nearly non-existent. But man, you know what I really do love is this thing, man. What, 270 awning? What made you go with the 270? Obviously, it's a, probably a rhetorical question, man, because yeah. of the coverage. But um, what is this one? Um, this, we just wanted something that would cover, give us a bit of area to sit in some shade and also something that would swing around and cover the kitchen. So that probably shortlisted two or three awnings. And then we also wanted something really lightweight and that would pack up to be quite small. 
Um, so the thing that ticked all those boxes for us, uh, we went with uh, the Rhino Rack. I think they call this one the Batwing. Yep, okay. So the Batwing. Yeah. 270. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see it up on the... That's the... Rhino Rack Batwing. Yeah, okay. So, man, I love this little... I love this little setup too. This is... This is the hub, man, is it? This is where, this where is the action it. happens. You know, Are you a cooker? I am a cooker. So, to me, camping and overlanding is just going somewhere remote to eat something good. So, I like cooking. So, I wanted, you know, a decent stove where I could have real good control over the heat and that sort of thing. And it also had to be the right shape and has to fall flat to slide back into its home. So, it's coming back to the, I don't want things on the ground. I want it, everything on slides. Uh, what have you even put a bloody... Uh, yeah, chopping board on top. Speak to my wife and she'll tell you when I'm cooking, I spread out. So I wanted a, a big enough prep surface. Top of the fridge helps with that too. I put things on there all the time. It's holding my beer well, that's good. Yeah, it's good. Um, so I just need a big area and then it's also sort of seamless too. So as I'm wiping, I can wipe into the wash basin if I want to and that sort of thing. You know, if I've got a cloth here, I can dab it and that's clean a up. Good, that's a good uh, idea. And what do you got in the drawer here? That's, that's um, yeah. Knives and forks, is it? Just knives oh, and yeah. forks, oh, utensils. Yeah. Press seal too, that's why I couldn't open it. A couple of rags. Keeps the kids out, yep. Yeah, exactly. So just basic stuff that you know can be put away when you're not using it. It's not the tidiest setup, so don't mind me. Mate, that's <laughs> the camping is, isn't it? That's it. And that's all on um what have you done there? That's all on fridge slides. Look at so that's Yeah, it's essentially just two fridge slides run in parallel. Mate, that's really good. I like that. Yeah. You've even got the nice cable savers down the side. Yeah, cable savers. You've gone all out on this, haven't you? I don't want to run over my fridge cable and find out my fridge has stopped working halfway down the track. And you, you, know? and you were saying you built this? Yeah, absolutely. So I um, I engaged a trailer builder to build the frame and the sides. Yep. That way, you know, it comes with a VIN plate, comes with rego papers, it's ready to hit the road. Uh, then I took it from there. So I did the whole internal fit out, you know, with the dividers, uh, the false floor which is over the kitchen which takes all our camp chairs and other cargo things uh, built the, the lid for it sealed it all up uh, with you know proper dust seals and compression seals um, put the racks on it which gave us a platform for our, our tent and our awning as well yeah, and that's that's looking really good speaking of speaking of tent show us this thing I'm actually really interested in this so I mentioned before that we're a family um, and we need space. We don't want to be trampling on top of each other all the time and giving ourselves strife and getting in each other's faces. So we wanted to have a bit of space so that everyone could spread out a bit. Uh, also, you know, I've got a wife, so we're camping with a lady and, you know, they like to have a bit of privacy as well. So a bit of privacy with that. Is that the reason for the um, that's the reason drop for the, down section here yeah you're, you're exactly right so this is the reason for the annex room you know it gives gives my wife somewhere private to you know get yeah, dressed and everything like that and that's got two ladders though two ladders yeah so it's big it's like a double rooftop tent Man. two ladders two is doors is it clean in there mate can I have a look up in there yeah it's just bedding it's right. not made or anything but no, that's, that's good stuff. that's good we're packing up so yeah okay let me climb up I'll give the climb up this ladder this is they nice ladders Look at the space in that. What, um, how big is this one, mate? It's 2200 mil wide. 2200, yeah, okay. So that's big. That's what's that, about four people? Yeah, so and they reckon it was four, but for three of us, it's it's big. <laughs> plenty of uh, plenty of space down here. Yeah, you got lighting in here, not yet. Not yet. So that's one of the things we've got to work on. Like, there's poles and stuff that would, you know, easily take a lantern or another strip okay. light or something. So yeah. plus you've got spreader bars to hold it on. Yep. Yeah, I got to work that out still. And two, and what you're saying, you got three people in this now, comfortable? Three people. We slept last night. We weren't even touching each other. You know, we had as much space as we wanted. Oh, it's even got. Uh, I didn't even notice that it's got sun vents or moon windows up the top as well. That's it. Yeah. At the moment, we got the tropical fly on for wet weather. Yep. Uh, but if you've got that go. off, you can. Let me come out. Oh yeah. You can open the tops and. Oh yeah. Look at the stars. That's. That's nice. So that's. I actually really like that. That's something. My trailer's sitting behind me, guys. But uh, something I need to work on. I'm getting ideas off Woody. And. 
around the front, mate. It's pretty simple drawbar. Yeah. I see you've got, what do you got there, your shovel mount? Yeah, I got my shovel mount. Shovel mount there. Uh, which just holds it easy access on the front of the trailer. Um, on the tailgate of the trailer is a pair of Max tracks. So that way I've got a Max track for every wheel that's on the ground. And I see you've got something very secretive here. Yeah, something it's that's brand new. Brand new product. So I know what it is, guys. But if you want to, um, if you want to check that out, we'll be going to film that video actually after after having yarn with Woody here. But that's really cool. So jump across to the Australian Overlander if you want to know what that is. I think it's a really cool um, product. Anyway, sorry, mate. What? Uh, yeah. So what do you got going? What's this for? Um, this sort of because we're you know on a budget and we're also trying to make things as useful as possible. We needed to find a solution to carry firewood and a solution to oh, deflect some stones too yep. so this whole build you know it's been build test build test and one of the early tests we found that this whole front of the trailer was getting peppered with stones yep and it was That's for two main yeah. reasons you know i've noticed you didn't have a shield yeah yeah i don't have the shield the cheap didn't have mud flaps on it which i've remedied now um but i wanted something with a bit of angle on it to deflect stones down that way they're not hitting something and then rebounding and smashing my back window i'm like Yep, that's always vehicle. important. Yep. And um, then I put some tie downs in it, so doubles as a firewood tray. So what are you so if we're collecting? What are they? They're like a aircraft track style. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So I got some track and cut it up into small sections and bolted it down. Yep. Um, and what? Um, so you've gone? Oh yeah, DO thirty five as well. Yeah. So you haven't held back on this one, eh? No, like well, good gear anyway. It's good. Yeah, I've been around a lot of this stuff, so I wanted to. I knew what worked and what didn't and, and that's the drawn power from the car that's the version three okay which is all metal this is the one they brought out to be compliant with uh, american standards so i knew that if i was ever doing international touring with one of these trailers i'd still be compliant i didn't even know there was a version three okay yeah so that's news for me there was some polymer gear in there which they've removed and that's all metal okay um and it just works the same as the works other exact same. Yeah, for 35 yeah. did okay um, then you spotted before, Damo, um, Anderson plug charging, there. Charging from the vehicle? Charging from the vehicle, so... So you've got, obviously, you've got another battery system in this yep. that's running from the Jeep charging through. You've got, have you got a second battery in the Jeep? I do, yeah. Okay. So guys, I won't, I'll just quickly, while we're standing next to it, check this out as well. That's Woody's Jeep. Sick looking piece of gear. So if you want to, uh... I won't focus on that now. I just wanted to give you a look while it's right beside me. But um, if you want to, if you want to see a video on that, leave a comment below, and I'm sure I can tear it up with uh, Woody again to to get on with that. Question, mate, I've got for you is: Far away. How are you finding that um, jockey wheel? Um, it cops a flogging. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I've got to come up with a solution for that too. Yeah. Um, if I'm honest. She's fairly. She looks fairly light. So it's only reason I ask because I've got one similar and mine, yeah. mine doesn't sort you of. You can see there how bashed it's been. Yeah. Um, I actually busted the wheel part of it because the wheel sits just under the firewood tray yeah. here. Yeah. It hangs down a little bit. Problem. I actually busted it at a um, at the Morton Bay Expo. <laughs> I was um, doing a like a trailer demo. It was like a recovery thing with uh, Dave Darmody from um, Four Wheel Drive Academy. Yep. And um, going over the humps and everything, we're scraping the drawbar, which is fine. It's a hundred yeah, meter drawbar. Yeah, she can. She looks like she can. Yeah, she it. can take it. But the the, um, the jockey wheel suffered hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's. I've, I've just noticed that because mine does the same thing. Mm. But another thing too, you've. What's this? Is this Raptor coating? It is. Yeah. All over. It is. Raptor so, or the Rhino? Raptor. It's Raptor. Yeah. So okay. Raptor the front because of the damage from stones. Yep. Um, Raptor the lid because yep. it was readily available when I was making the lid. Yep. And it gives it that sort of like nice, tough texture yeah, that finish as well. does feel good. But unlike some other bed liners, it's um, still easy to clean. Yep. Uh, yeah, it does, it looks like it's All I have too to do is run a sponge it? over it and just like washing a car. And you'll see here, Damo, I just, um, come around. the guards. Oh yeah. We're getting absolutely spat on by yeah, stones. Yeah, so checker plated that as well. So I, I didn't a, even notice on this side. Put a reinforcing plate on and raptured that as well, that way, as this gets damaged, I can touch it up. 
Yep. And it's not the painted steel guard that's getting wrecked. And you've got trap in there as well. Yep. Were you, have you stored it? I didn't notice anything up there. Was that just for later on? That's kind of mission specific. So, yep. And um, I like that idea anyway. That's yeah. something I want to do to mine. I throw, um, if we're using the chainsaw and cutting through a track, yep. that's where I'll have my chainsaw. Yeah, good idea. Once oily and dirty and hot. Yep. Rather than putting it back in the bag and putting it in the Jeep. Yep. So that way I'm also not fatiguing myself constantly unpacking it and repacking it. Yep. That way I can just stay there until we've made it through and I get a chance to clean it. And what are you using? Actually, Mike, I've just had a look underneath there. You've got rated recovery points on that too. Yeah, so they're... Uh, I've actually, never seen that on a trailer, oh, except there's a few that I've seen, but not yeah. anyone that's sort of done it itself. Yeah, that's they're cool. ones that just happen to fit well, so... On, they're from a Land Cruiser. Okay. On a Land Cruiser, um, they're rated to like five ton. Yep. But um, I don't know what they'd be rated to in the application I've used them for, but I just wanted something there so that if I needed to pull the trailer backwards, I could. Wait, uh, brakes, I was just having a look here. Yep. Obviously you've color coded them, so they look good. What what brakes is this running? Um, these are electric brakes, uh, brake tubs from Derek just Alco, which are sort of, you know, the anyone who's doing trailers Yep. Knows about Alco stuff. Yep. Um, matched stud pattern too. Jeep pattern, obviously. Jeep pattern. Jeep and they wheel. come in anything? You can match them in you anything? You can. Like, um, the rarer ones, like the Jeep, is pricey. Yep. It's probably one of the most expensive parts about this whole operation. Yeah. <laughs> was getting the matched hubs. Ax axles and brakes, though, yeah. Matching the, the wheels, though, was really oh, right. important to me. Um, yeah, it's really, always nice to have a exactly. matching set there, I agree. I wanted that, you know, extra spare, because the trail's got three Jeep has five. Yep. I've got eight wheels in the mix. Long. They're all on the same tire size. They're all on Jeep wheels. Yep. So. All right. It's just a redundancy thing. But a lock, and that's obviously, that's obviously powered all off of um, a brake controller from yep. in in the car. That's right. Yeah. That's hooked up. That just runs through the line there. Runs through, and then you got control off road as well. So it's not a heavy trailer. I think legally it doesn't need to be braked. Okay. What's it? Uh, all right. There you go. What's it? Weighing in dry, do you know? Uh, not sure dry, but with 40 litres of fuel and a full water tank, we're at 850 kilos. Mate, that is freaking yeah. light. Yeah. That is that is lightweight. But I did want the control, especially for off-road. So, okay, so water, what were you, what was the capacity of water on this? Um, 70 litres. 70? Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's, yeah. that gives you a couple of days out there easy. Yeah. And... But obviously you got all the lights rigged in, so what battery are you running? Um, and, uh, we're running uh, Optima, Yellow Top yep. D31. Yeah, how many amp hours is that? It's 75 amp hours, yep. but with Optimas they rate them at usable discharge. Yep. So it's, I guess it's the equivalent of 100 or 110 AGM. So, and you're using uh, DC-DC on that? Yep, DC-DC What are you pumping controller. on that? What size you got? It's just a 25 amp charger. 25, I like 25, mate. I think that's a good, uh, yeah. that's a good number. I've essentially duplicated the setup that's in the Jeep okay. and duplicate it into the trailer, which means if I have any componentry failures, yep. I've got interchangeability. Well, I like that, man. Yeah. That's bloody, mate, she's a good, uh, she's a good looking trailer and it's certainly, watching you guys use it these last couple of days, I mean, it's um, giving me ideas, giving me some really good ideas to build, modify mine. And hopefully it'll give you guys uh, some ideas on doing yours. But um, what do you mate, appreciate that. If you guys wanna know more or see more about this trailer or um, Woody's Jeep, leave a comment, jump across to um, your, the Australian Overlander on, on YouTube. I'll, I'll leave it down, down the bottom here uh, so you guys can see that. But um, other than that, mate, appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Thank you guys for coming and uh, hanging around, giving a quick look at that and We'll stay tuned and we'll see you in the next one. You.